Parts of this podcast contain mature subject matter. Listener discretion is advised. Hi, my name is Benedict Lopes. I'm the program director of Scarborough Arts. Yeah. <laughs> You're listening to the Big Art Book Podcast. The Big Art Book Project is an experiment in 2012. It's the merger of two annual programs, a youth visual arts project and an open writing project that we do. We wanted to combine those two elements and generate fresh new creative content and really see where that would take us. We weren't sure about the response, we weren't sure how it would be received by our community of artists, but the outpouring of material and support has been overwhelming. You'll be listening to a selection of writers and poets chosen by our juror from the Big Art Book. My name is Jamil Kaleem. I was born in Toronto, uh, born in Toronto General, and uh, grew up uh, downtown, uh, moved to North York, Victoria Park, and Lawrence. Uh, spent most of my youth sort of there. I uh, went to high school at Wexford Collegiate in Scarborough. We moved across the road to Scarborough, so went to Wexford, which is a wonderful art school. And uh, now I live um, uh, in the Guild or West Hill. Uh, you know, so I sort of haven't sort of left Scarborough, and I certainly haven't left Toronto. So my roots are uh, Toronto, Scarborough, and I'm still here. Well, right now my favorite local spot is Boise. Because that's where I'm doing my studying right now, and that's where I get a lot of incredible feedback, and I meet with a lot of interesting folk. The piece that I'm going to read today uh, is an excerpt from uh, a play that I had written. I would written three plays. This was the first in a sort of trilogy of plays. It happens halfway through the play uh, that has really been dealing with issues around race, class, and gender and African-Canadian youth culture. This piece is a reflection, a real reflection, based on a real situation that had happened to me when I believe I was around 13, 12, or 13. So here we go. Introspective man. I walked in the bright sunshine, a beautiful Sunday afternoon, guardrail to the right of me, road to the left, traffic fairly heavy. Going to a friend's house, a white friend, that fact should be relevant. I walked in the bright sunshine, thinking of music and my future, dreaming of being big, dreaming of being. Many cars drove by. There was a church just up the road and apartments directly behind me. Nigger! A car full of white boys screamed as they drove by. They seemed big as I was small, 16, 15, 14. Perhaps small and nigger, it burned in my soul. Church just up the street. I felt like running after the car. Those motherfuckers. But instead, I walked stunned as my scenery changed behind me. Innocence to the left, an industrial building, and just up the street, a church. At the time, I had hated with a passion, still do my teeth ground together. Heart was pumping, sweat ran down my side, emanating from my black armpits. I wondered if those boys realized, nigger, what they did to me. It left me defenseless. I felt naked standing by the side of the road. There I stood naked, east of Eden, to the left a Chrysler plant, up the road a church. At that moment, I wasn't human. I wasn't a living, breathing organism. I was a nigger, and I felt like a nigger, a non-being, an anti-organism, void of morality, void of essence, free will. They controlled my emotions. They altered my mental state and drove on by. They violated my conscience, raped my subconscious and drove on by. Through my periphery, I saw myself smaller than life. Behind innocence to the left of field, I neared the church nigger. It echoed. I thought I was like everybody else. I had forgotten. Innocence lay in the garden. I'd left that space forever. As the sun bent down, the word beat down harder and harder, ever harder. They spat on me, beat me upside my head and sped off. As the sun and the world saturated my body and soul, I noticed the white church, now very near. High steeple, beautiful west facade. I looked at the stained glass window and noticed Christ's image, Mary and Joseph standing with the sun reflecting off the yellow hair. I looked at my silver watch bright against my dark skin and wondered if those boys were on their way 
to afternoon service. You're listening to the Scarborough Arts Big Art Book Podcast here in studio at Scarborough Arts. I was going to my friend's house and, you know, you know, it was my good friend. You know, these guys used to like feed me every Tuesday that pizza night. I'd go over to their house. It was like, you know what I mean? They were like German immigrants and like, I mean, these people like, you know, they had love for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when I was growing up, my best friend was Japanese. I used to go to his house every day at lunch. His moms used to like take care of me. I still go over there. You know what I mean? If I need to eat, I know where to go. My other best friend just lived up the road there. Boom. Right? He was German. So for me... You're listening to the Scarborough Arts Big Art Book Podcast here in studio at Scarborough Arts. But to have it sort of public like that, it was like, oh, okay. It's out there. It's big. Well, you, you, you got nothing. They they run things. It's like, and you can't respond, and you can't engage, and you can't say, well, hold on, let's discuss the idea. I mean, you know, I, I understand, like, yeah. you, you know, if you use a GGA, then maybe it's okay, but, you know, you're using ER. I mean, <laughs> that's not too hip-hop. Like, what's going on, guys? Let's talk. You know, it's like, bam, we got them. Bam, and they're big. You know what I mean? And I was small, like physically, you know what I mean? So they knew, like this kid's like 12, 13, you know what I mean? So for me, it was like, and I couldn't deal with it, and I couldn't process it till I went to university. And when it came out, and the part that freaked me out and really, you know, still today, um, Yeah, for me, <sighs> for like for me, it wasn't so bad, but you know, like when my mom saw it, and then she came up afterwards, like holy smokes. You know, I it for me it was a kind of shame. You know, what I mean, like never talked to her about it. And for her to come up and say, oh my God, I didn't know. And she was like teary eyed and all freaked out. I was like, whoa, whoa, you know, this is a great event. You know, people are congratulating me like the play's done it. But my mom's response was like, she was so hurt. She's like, oh my God, why didn't you tell me? It's like, that was when my mother and myself had the first sort of conversation around that whole thing around race and how you grew up and what you experienced and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, art was sort of a sort of bridge of communication. I couldn't talk to her. She had to come to a play to, you know, hear one of the most sort of deep you know, moving moments in my life, right? She had to, like, show up to buy a ticket to go see it. You know what I mean? Oh, man. So, but at least we started a conversation after that, which was pretty good. So, it goes deep. It goes deep. It goes deep. I didn't think it'd be so cathartic, man. I didn't think it'd be cathartic. But art, man, that's the nature of it. Scarborough Arts is a not-for-profit community arts organization. We've been proudly serving our community of Scarborough through the arts since 1978. To find out more information about Scarborough Arts and our ongoing programs and projects, you can visit us at scarborougharts.com.